equinoctial greetings and greetings of earth and heaven on this day. Sol in Pisces still until tomorrow. And uh, Luna waning in Pisces also. Let us adore together the Bayoun deity, the Father, Mother, God, who in unity formulates the golden and magical child, the eld archetype and hologram of the human race. Nature is a system of nuptials and gives us the language of spirit by the love of the goddess leading us on to the divine life. The crown of immortality for us is the power of godhood in a kingdom of love wherein the heart dwells. And here do we adore the Bayoun God in its unity and in love. Love is our essence and our nature. It tinctures the pure expression of the will. In honor of this nameless God, with the love of the goddess and by the zeal of our spiritual aspiration, are we able to see the soul unveiled, that we might know each other in the light. In beauty, truth, and love, and by way of the essence that is the pure will in each of us, do we in peace and harmony also adore this golden and magical child of the Bayoun God. O thou who aspirest to knowledge of the heart, know that equilibrium is the basis of the work. We must always endeavor to seek light through the strife of contending forces. Rejoice, therefore, that through thy trials thou, thou shalt triumph. The Master said, Blessed art thou. Yet, O aspirants, let thy victories bring thee not to vanity. With the increase of gnosis should come the increase of wisdom. Be sure that thy soul is steadfast. Fear is failure in the forerunner of failure, and courage is the beginning of virtue. Therefore fear not the spirits, but be firm and courteous with them. We are what we make of ourselves, our actions affecting each ourselves, and also the entire universe. Worship and neglect not the physical body which is thy temporary connection to the outer and material world. Knowledge of the heart starts by strengthening and controlling the animal passions and by disciplining both the emotions and the reason. Strive ever to nourish the higher aspirations. Verily in heart do we good unto others for its own sake and not for any gratuity. Remember that unbalanced force is evil we must ever act passionately, think rationally, and each must be thyself. Truly also, have the greatest self-respect and accumulate virtue in all that you do. Virtue is the prelude to holiness. The material act is but the outward expression of our thoughts. We must strive ever to the control of thought and the fixity of our intent. Establish thyself firmly in the equilibrium of forces, in the center of the cross of the elements, that rosy cross from whose center the creative word issued in the birth of the dawning universe. Therefore must we be prompt and active as the silks, avoiding frivolity and caprice. We must be energetic and strong like the salamanders, avoiding irritability and ferocity. Also, we must be flexible and attentive to images like the undines, avoiding idleness and changeability. And finally, we should be laborious and patient like the gnomes, avoiding gross, grossness and avarice. In true religion there is no sect. Therefore take heed that thou blaspheme not the name by which another knoweth his God. For if thou do this thing in Jupiter, thou wilt blaspheme Jehovah, and in Osiris, Yeshua. Ask and ye shall have, seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you.
Well, uh, equinoctial greetings, uh, even though technically uh, the equinox doesn't really hit until late tonight, early tomorrow. Um, we welcome Alex back here. We haven't seen him in a while. So it's nice to have him back and, and helps us to celebrate a little bit more. Also some good news with the church. We're getting uh, the roof fixed and the, and the bell tower roof fixed. Uh, not yet the bell tower itself, but um, we're working on it. We have gardening issues uh, coming up in the spring. So there's a good bit going on around here uh, that I, I hope we'll be able to report on as time moves forward. Uh, for today, I'm going to talk about Shakti Pot. That's the theme of our sermon here today. And um, you can think of Shakti Pot in two ways: spiritual force. You can think of it as spiritual authority. And certainly, it's a it's a force that starts from one and moves to another. Whether that's an individual uh, transmitting uh, to another individual, or whether that's an institution granting even a certificate of education, we really talk about that uh, as authority. Now, in a certain sense, authority is not well received in Gnostic circles, right? Um, I don't have uh, the authority to give you your spiritual, your spiritual reference, your spiritual power, your spiritual resource. Okay, where, whatever that well is, that comes from inside of you. So I, I can't give you anything there. I, I can't. So we don't see the authority. Okay, uh, but what we do see is we see a force that comes off of one's aura. In the same way, uh, an exciting person can excite others. Um, uh, a, a, a highly disciplined person tends to make the rest of the room disciplined working in an office. Uh, this kind of... Uh, um, personal, uh, Patty Smith called it the particles of charm, the way you manipulate your particles of charm. Um, and, and that uh, really uh, speaks to something that I think is inside of you. And, and there's, a, there's an interesting scene that gets talked about in some mystical circles in the New Testament where Jesus is walking and somebody touches the back of his robe and he feels the energy drain out from him. And he says, who touched me? Um, so we can get to some kind of mystical level where um, there is this, you know, force, you know, running through a person. Um, with authority, that can always get itself into its own, uh, shall we say, sparks from the one main fire. Um, there's a, there's the story of the wandering bishops who kind of became Christian. Um, uh, these are outliers. You know, these were guys that uh, um, were running around preaching their own message, really in contradiction to what was probably a very highly authoritarian church. And so, they were they had their own little troubadour Gnostic uh, kind of thing going on. They were um, they were they were quite heterodox. They were outside the control of the Roman Pontiff. So. Um, this is probably more myth. Um, we know Jesus didn't exist. We know the apostles didn't really exist. Um, so, the Jesus of Protestantism and fundamentalism and the orthodoxies that they've developed, you know, have created all sorts of other. Um, heterodox situations of uh, people joining the Council of Elders and receiving, you know, uh, grace uh, from above, and they become the church leaders that have the magic that raise the dead, and it gets kind of silly. So the Shakti pot of authority uh, that I spent a lot of time on, it kind of takes itself in its own way, um, uh, you know, as, uh, I think, illegitimate. Uh, but... Uh, In, 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 the, in the contagion of a happy person, in, in the effectiveness in that, um, in the wooing of, of lovers, you know, we, we, we have these uh, poems of, the, of these wandering troubadours who uh, sang love notes outside windows, and yet when we 
go back and examine those songs, we can examine them from mystical content, even though they look and sound like love songs. It's as if they were secret messages and communicating something that then takes on the power of um, glamour. You know, uh, that it goes underground. The alchemical secrets took on a glamour because, you know, uh, these mysteries were shrouded in symbols, covered over by symbols. Um, but one important way, way of shakipat in the West is really called the laying on of hands. Um, in a certain sense, akin to the, the king's sword on the shoulder, uniting a person, but here we have the laying out of hands of, say, one guru bishop of some sort, uh, you know, extending, you know, um, a line to another and saying, you're welcome, you know, in this, in this sacred line. Um, so maybe it's even from all this that you know the the troubadours evolved or the wandering bishops evolved, but certainly um, that which was outside the orthodoxy um, and within um, the the idealist you know expression of uh, of a Western philosophical tradition, you know uh, where the church got itself lost in authority and control. So. Um, we had the we developed this other line of blue blood sort of uh, it was a mystical line um, today we shroud that in legends of the secret chiefs of the hidden Mahatmas uh, uh, you know of beings that evolved beyond us that may have started out like the us um, but certainly we know these to be the few so in modern Shaktipat, then the real I the real issue is that it's a flow of energy that is extended, uh, um, you know, between more than one person, two minimum, or we can say a congregation, we can say a community, we can say a country. You know, uh, there's a certain Shakti pot, um, even for as large a country as the United States, because we do that with the Pledge of Allegiance. We do that with something that everybody knows. We do that uh, in other very powerful ways, too. Uh, you know, I think of Don McLean's song, Bye Bye uh, you know, American Pie, um, because that catches our imagination, too. And so these archetypes grab us, and, and, and that's what... That's the energy inside of us that the Shakti pot brings out. You know, gun lovers have the Marlboro Man in them. That's an archetype that comes out. That's strong, and that's something that we follow and and that moves and inspires us. Um, so there's drama to this experience. There is, in a sense, the opening of grace, like say these fundamentalist sects, you know, really have. Um, there's the Shakti pot of a syzygy, a couple working together, the energy between them. Um, there's, uh, you know, technical and, and, and uh, physical operations that we talk about and all that. There's spiritual ecstasy and uh, tantras and other things that go into all of this. Um, but when we say as a, as a Gnostic church that we are a community of people um, fostering genius in each other, that's the Shakti pot. That's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're helping each other to bring out the genius in ourselves. We each have that responsibility ourselves. We're, you don't come here for us to do that for you. But you come here to be inspired and to pick up on what we're doing in ourselves and to bring out that genius that is within you. And that's our Shakti pot. That's us passing the infection of our passion you know, onto a congregation, and that's a magic. So, with that being said, I'll say thank you again and greetings of the Equinox once again. Um, and we'll move to the Eucharist of the Five Elements.
For Osiris Anaphros, who is found perfect before the gods, has said, These are the elements of my body, perfected through suffering, glorified through trial. For the scent of the dying roses as the repressed sigh of my suffering, and the flame red fire is the energy of mine undaunted will. And the cup of wine is the pouring out of the blood of my heart, sacrificed unto regeneration, unto the newer life. The bread is the foundation of my body, which I transform readily, that it may be renewed. For I am Osiris triumphant, even Osiris on offers the justified. I am he who is clothed with the body of flesh, yet in whom is the spirit of the great gods. I am the Lord of life, triumphant over death. He who partaketh with me shall arise with me. I am the manifester and matter of those whose abode is in the invisible. I am purified. I stand upon the universe. I am its reconciler with the eternal gods. I am the perfecter of matter, and without me the universe is not. I am come the power of the light. I am come the mercy of the light. I am come the light of wisdom. The light hath healing in its wings. Blessed be thou, Lord of the universe, for thy glory flows out to the ends of the universe, rejoicing. Through thirty ethers I summon the forces of the universe in myself. I inhale the perfume of the rose, for the air is the sweetness of life. I feel the warmth of the sacred lamp, the fire of my very own spirit. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my renewed body. I drink this wine that the body become infused with spirit. Finally, the ringing of the bell enchants my soul unto the city of the pyramid. I inhale the perfume of the rose, for the air is the sweetness of life. I feel the warmth through the sacred lamp, the fire of my very own spirit. I taste this cake of light to nourish the foundation of my renewed body. drink this wine that the body that come infused with spirit. Finally, the ringing of the bell enchants my soul unto the city of the pyramids.
Behold the doctrine of the four yachts. Integrity. The integral man and woman seeks always to do that which is benevolent, yearning to do that which is right. Without prospect of profit, he or she dedicates him or herself to what is good, and without pressure from others, he or she redresses his or her errors. Good deeds are accumulated as it is known that they will be sufficient to create character in us. If bad deeds are not accumulated, they will not be sufficient to disrupt our lives. The petty man or woman thinks that small good deeds are unimportant and does not do them. He or she thinks that small bad deeds are unimportant and does not abstain from them. Thus his or her evil accumulates until it can no longer be disguised, and his or her unconscious guilt grows until it can no longer be suppressed. The noble man or woman strives to harvest virtue in all its forms. Intent Intent is not a thought or an object or a wish. Intent is what can make a man or woman succeed when his or her thoughts say that he or she is defeated. It operates in spite of one's self-indulgence and generates invulnerability and impeccability. He or she then walks the path with heart and waits for an opening to freedom. Sufficient personal power leads to the mastery of intent. Our reality is completely and entirely based upon our intent. It is a sign of considerable advance when a man begins to be moved by the will, by his own energy self-determined, instead of being moved by a desire, by a response to an external attraction or repulsion. Intent creates your reality. What are you intending for yourself? You can recognize it by listening to your real wishes, the ones with emotional buttons on them, the wishes that make you cry or scare you enough to make you cringe or bring a huge smile across your face just thinking about them. They are buried deep inside and they are the force that moves you in this life. Intelligence. All matter is alive and in its own way is intelligent. Matter is made manifest by its rate of vibration. The frequency of vibration in matter and its density provide for us a key to the level of consciousness indwelling any being or object. Its rate of vibration shows us the degree of its intelligence. Nothing is dead or inanimate in nature. Everything exists in some degree of animation. Everything is alive and in its own way is an expression of universal mind. Only this all-pervading consciousness and intelligence is expressed in a different way in all the diverse beings made manifest. The degree of consciousness in any one thing corresponds to the degree of its density or the speed of its vibrations. The more dense the matter, the less conscious it is and the less intelligent. In our bodies, we must strive to raise the rate of vibration of our flesh, as we know that flesh contributes to the quality of thought in our brain. Also, the greater the rate of vibration of any particular being, the more conscious and the more intelligent the matter. Hence, intelligence is related to adaptation. The more intelligent an individual, the better able he or she is to adapt to the circumstances of life. He or she then learns to accept the world as it is and is not confounded by finding it not to be what he or she might want it to be. Intuition. Every one of us possesses the faculty, the interior sense that is known by the name of intuition, but how rare are those who know how to develop it? It is, however, only by the aid of this faculty that men can ever see things in their true colors. It is an instinct of the soul which grows in us in proportion to the employment we give it, and which helps us to perceive and understand the realities of things with far more certainty than can the simple use of our senses and the exercise of our reason. What are called good sense and logic enable us to see only the appearance of things, that which is evident to everyone. The instinct spoken here, being a projection of our perceptive consciousness, a projection which acts from the subject to the object and not vice versa, awakens in us spiritual senses and power to act. These senses assimilate to themselves the essence of the object or of the action under examination and represent it to us as it really is, not as it appears to our physical senses and to our cold reason. We begin with instinct, we end with omniscience. The words of Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. And with that, I'll say the Lord bless you. The Lord enlighten your minds and comfort your hearts and sustain your bodies. The Lord bring you to the accomplishment of pure will, the great work, the summum bonum, true wisdom, and perfect happiness. Amen.